I'm here to tell you about uh, a, an important problem that many people are not aware of, and that is nutritional declines in, in foods. And I'm talking about declines that happen before harvest. I'm not talking about the losses that occur after harvest. Now, I apologize, I'm going to have to go through my slides fairly quickly, but I invite anyone who is interested in seeing them more to send me an email, and I will be glad to send you a full copy of my slides. Uh, my email address is on my last slide and also on some pages I've put on the stage up front here. One of the, one of the ways of studying nutrient declines is to compare nutrient content data that was published a long time ago with modern nutrient content data. Now, in 2004, we did that with 43 foods, mostly vegetables. We looked at uh, protein, fat, carbohydrate, ash, these minerals, these vitamins. We looked at them for every one of these 43 foods and, and took an average, and the results are shown here. The, the yellow line represents no decline. This line represents 20% decline. Most of the declines are in that range. Uh, for, for riboflavin, 38% decline. Uh, one year later, a similar study was done using UK data from 1930s to 1980s, uh, averaged separately for uh, 26 vegetables and 38 fruits. Unfortunately, the authors used a flawed method of analysis on this data, and uh, I published uh, the following year uh, an improved analysis Many of the declines have gone down in this analysis, but you see uh, we still have, oops, wrong button. Uh, we still have a lar very large decline for uh, copper in the vegetables, not so much in the fruits. The, the authors, by the way, graciously accepted these, these changes. Now, the eight key points that I want to make is that these nutrient declines are smaller than the nutrient uh, losses that occur after harvest. They can result from using fertilizers. They can result from selective breeding for high yield. They can result from making hybrids and also increased atmospheric carbon dioxide can cause declines. These are difficult to measure because they're small and there's uncertainty in the data. The most popular idea about the cause is probably wrong. And these declines are inadvertent and unwelcome and they're usually not studied as such by agricultural scientists. Nutrient declines are usually in the range of 5 to 35 percent, rarely 75 percent for copper. The average losses of vitamins and minerals in white flour and rice after harvest is 75 percent. The losses in added sugars, of course, are 100 percent empty calories. The losses in fa added fats and oils are mostly 100 percent. So, the message is vegetables and fruits, in spite of these declines, are still our best sources for many nutrients. Nutrient declines can, can be caused by using fertilizers, which are usually used to increase yield. Nutrient absorption and synthesis usually goes up along with the yield, but not as doesn't keep up with the yield, but not always as much as the yield. So, for example, if the plant weight increases by 50% due to the fertilizers and the nutrient weight increases by 40%, then you have a 7% decline. The calculation is here. 
This is known as a dilution effect. There's a, a major review of it. Wrong button. Uh, uh, this was published in 1981. The dilution effect in plant nutrition studies. It's a long review, 28 pages, 100 references, which go back to the 1940s. It is uh, still being cited over 100 times in the last five years, so many years later. Uh, now we should call it the environmental dilution effect because we know there's another kind of dilution effect, a genetic dilution effect. This is uh, an example of environmental dilution effect caused by fertilizer. Uh, these uh, red raspberry plants were grown in soil that contained 12 parts per million phosphorus, and then the experimenters added 22 parts per million and 44 parts per million. This caused the yield to go from 1 to 1.4 to 2.2 as you added phosphorus. The yield went up, but the amounts of, new, of minerals in the plants did not go up by the same amount. And so there is a dilution effect. Uh, most commonly, you get a pattern like this. Compared to the unfertilized, adding some phosphorus dropped the calcium. Adding some more phosphorus dropped it more. This is a very common pattern here. Uh, one exception is phosphorus itself the phosphorus level did go up with the highest level of phosphorus fertilization. Now, the second kind of study of nutrient declines are side-by-side -side studies in which old and new varieties are grown side-by-side -side in the same soil with the same fertilizer. Everything is the same except, except the genetics. And there have been seven of these studies that I know about, beginning in 2000 uh, in broccoli, wheat, another study in wheat, maize, potato, another study in broccoli, and in rice. All of these showed that as the yield went up, the concentration of minerals went down. Uh, the only exception is potato, where they did not see this kind of decline. So this is a genetic dilution effect. It's caused by genetic changes in the plants, selective breeding. It's, a, it's documented in these side-by-side -side studies, including of multiple hybrids. It differs from environmental dilution effects that are caused by fertilizers and sometimes by other means. Uh, it's purely genetic. And it was first reported in 2000, 60 years after the first evidence for environmental dilution effects. I'm going to show you data from two examples. This is from uh, Mexico, where they developed the Green Revolution varieties of wheat uh, from 1950 to 1992. You see here the downtrend. In, in the concentration of iron, zinc, and also phosphorus. They didn't plot it. Uh, meanwhile, the yield is going up. That was the purpose of their work, was to increase the yield. The yield increase was 53% in the 42 years. This is uh, the 2011 study of 14 mil, uh, uh, minerals in broccoli. Uh, I've shown data for four of them here. You see uh, from the release date of 1950 to 2004, there is this trend, downtrend, in the concentration of these minerals and others that they also reported. Now, they, unfortunately, they did not uh, publish similar plots for mineral concentration versus the size of the heads, the size of the broccoli heads. But what they did do is publish correlation coefficients between the size of the broccoli head and the minerals that they contained. 
And these are negative correlations, meaning that as the size of the head went up, the mineral concentrations went down. And these are very large correlations, uh, 0.8. You, you can't have a correlation any greater than minus 1 in this situation. So you see many very strong correlations between mineral content and the size of the head. Uh, the one exception is sodium, where as the heads get bigger, you get more sodium, uh, which we're not exactly uh, wanting to have. Now, when I was young, this is the only kind of broccoli that you ever saw in the store, bunch broccoli. Nowadays, after broccoli breeders have been working very hard for many years to increase the size of the broccoli heads in order to increase the yield, uh, this is about the only thing that you commonly find in the store. They're called broccoli crowns. Uh, they typically have a hollow stem, which is caused by too rapid growth and too, too much fertilizer. Now, nutrient declines can also be caused by hybridization. There's very little data on this that I found. These are two of the best studies that I have found. Uh, one of them uh, was a study of 55, 55 different uh, varieties, hybrids of cabbage from the same two parents. The authors looked at the average amount of nutrients in the hybrids compared to the parents. And you see, uh, they found declines in every case here, uh, up to 60% decline for copper. Uh, a similar study in eggplant, 14 different hybrids from the same parents. Uh, there were some increases. Uh, the two largest changes were decreases. Nutrient declines can also be caused by increasing uh, carbon dioxide in the air. There have been d hundreds of studies about that now. This one is the most recently published one uh, last fall. Uh, nine and eight to 18 rice varieties grown in China and Japan. So you see average declines here. Interestingly, uh, vitamin E went up. This is uh, one of the test sites in Japan, and you can see the tubing that is used to increase the concentration of, ca of carbon dioxide. Now, they used a large amount uh, corresponding to what they think will be the amount in our atmosphere in the year 2100. Now, we're not yet there yet, of course, uh, but we're about one-third of the way there since 1950. Uh, so perhaps the, the current declines would be uh, one-third of these amounts shown. These nutrient declines are, are very difficult to measure. If you're using nutrient content tables, you have to realize that they're approximate. Most people don't realize that. Uh, the USDA 1999 data that we used uh, USDA reports 11 to 25 percent average uncertainty in the numbers that you look up in this table. So if you're trying to look at the difference between old or new, and the old has uncertainty of this size and the new has uncertainty of this size, there is no way that you can uh, reliably measure a decline for single foods. What, what we did in that first slide that I showed you was to average over 43 foods, and that result is much more reliable. The side-by-side -side studies of many varieties have similar uncertainty problems. You have to study a large number of varieties in order to get a reliable trend. Now, because of these uncertainties, Statistical analysis is a must. Sometimes it is not done. When scientists do it, they, they calculate 
p-values and confidence intervals, and I'll show you the results of that. This is, these are the results from the first slide that I showed you with the statistical analysis added to it. The, the statistical analysis allows you to calculate a range of values. This number, 38%, that's our best guess, but it has uncertainty too. And this confidence interval gives you an idea of how much uncertainty there is about this number. And if, if the bars here does not go up to zero, then we say it's statistically significant. Uh, vitamin C is statistically significant. Vitamin A is not. The best guess is 20% decline, but there is some chance that the real decline is really zero. So it's not considered statistically significant. This is what has to be done uh, in order to know the reliability of your results. Many people look at this data and the first thing that pops in their head is, oh, modern farming is decreasing the mineral content of soil and that's why we're seeing these decreases. But the broad bulk wheat experiment, a very unique experiment, uh, questions that idea. They had up to 160 years of wheat and soil samples. Uh, and in 2008, they took out all these samples that they had saved and measured the concentration of minerals in the soil. And what they found was that the soil minerals were constant or rising, not declining. This was true in unfertilized plots chemically fertilized plots, and also with mineral fertilized, uh, manure fertilized plots. And they said our results refute the notion that conventional farming causes a de depletion of mineral nutrients in soil. Now this is only one study. Unfortunately, I don't know of any other studies like it. But this is certainly enough to question this mineral decline theory. Here are their results published for zinc, copper, and magnesium. Uh, the, the mineral concentrations from 1860 to modern time were either flat or increasing. Most of the, the, the best increases occurred with uh, plots that were fertilized with farmyard manure. Now this is for total concentrations. They also reported extractable concentrations of minerals with these results in the plots that were fertilized with farmyard manure. These nutrient declines are unwelcome, unintended side effects of current agricultural practices. And so uh, you don't hear a lot about them. The side-by-side -side studies that I showed you, seven of them, they weren't done, mostly they were not done to study nutrient declines. They were done in order to look for varieties that were high in some particular unit in mineral that they could use in their breeding program. That was true in the broccoli study. Uh, they were breeding for high minerals. Uh, it was also true in the Rice study and most of the others. If, if these were increases instead of decreases, I think we would all be hearing a lot more about them. Because of this, uh, there are very few studies and many questions that remain, including what I'm sure you're all wondering, uh, what would be the effect of living soil techniques on uh, helping to prevent these uh, nutrient declines. There's no literature on that that I know of. So, nutrient uh, declines before harvest are small compared to after harvest losses. They can be caused by fertilizers, selective breeding, hybridization, increased atmospheric carbon dioxide, and maybe other reasons that we don't no, for sure yet. They're difficult to measure because of uncertainties. 
the most popular cause is questionable, and there's a lot we don't know uh, about this subject. Uh, this is um, some references and also my email address. If any of you would like to um, send me an email, I'll be glad to send you a copy of these slides. Thank you very much.